First book of Samuel, chapter 18. And it came to pass when he, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was, was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David. And his garments, even to his sword and to his bow and to his griddle. And David and David went out whithersoever Saul, went, Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the man of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. And it came to pass as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the woman came out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the woman answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth. And the saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands. And to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul and he prophesied in the midst of the house and David played with his hand as, as at other times and there was a gavelin in Saul's hand. And Saul cast a gavelin for he said, I will smite, smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed remove him from him and made him his captain over thousands. And he went out and came in before the people. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, because he went out and came in before them. And Saul said to David, Behold, my elder daughter, Merab, her will I give thee to wife. Only be thou vigilant for me, and to fight the Lord's battles. For Saul said, let not, let not mine hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. And David said unto Saul, Who am I, and what is my life? or my father's family in Israel, that I should be son-in-law to the king. But it came to pass at the time when Merab, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David, that she was given unto Adriel, the, Me the Melechite, to his wife. And, and Michal, Saul's daughter, loved David. And they, they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. And Saul said, I will give him her that she may be a snare to him and that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Wherefore Saul said to David, Thou shalt this day be my son-in-law and the one of the twain. And Saul commanded his servants, saying, Commune with David secretly, and say, Behold, the king have delight in thee, and all of his servants love thee. Now therefore be the king's son-in-law. And Saul's servants spake those words, in the ears of David. And David said, Seemeth it to you a light thing to be a king's son-in-law, seeing that I am poor, seeing that I am a poor man and lightly esteemed. And the servants of Saul told him, saying, On this manner spake David. And Saul said, Thus shall you say to David, The king desireth not any drawy, but an hundred foreskins of the Philistines, to be avenged of the king's enemies. But Saul thought to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. And when his servants told David these words, it pleased David. 
well to be king's son-in-law, and the days were not expired. Wherefore David arose and went, he and his men, and slew of the Philistines two hundred men, and David brought their foreskins, and they gave them in full tale to the king, that he might be the king's son-in-law. And Saul gave him Michal, his daughter, to wife. And Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David, and that Michal, Michal Saul's daughter, loved him. And Saul was yet the more afraid of David, and Saul became David's enemy continually. Then the princes of the Philistines went forth, and it came to pass after they went forth that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name was much set by. In the course of this foregoing chapter, we left David in triumph. Now in this chapter, we have the improvement of his triumphs. He soon became Saul's constant attendant, Jonathan's covenant friend, the darling of his country, the allies of his tri triumphs. This is the vanity that accompanies even a right work, that for it a man is envied. So David was by Saul. He hated him and sought to kill him himself. He feared him and contrived how, to, how he might have some mischief done to him. He proposed to marry his daughter to him, but cheated him of the eldest to provoke him and gave him the younger upon conditions which would endanger his life. But David performed his conditions bravely and grew to be more and more esteemed. Still David is rising, but as all that aim at the crown of life must expect, he had a great deal of difficulty and opposition to grapple with.